are you guys capable of accomplishing this season? Uh, championship. Well, you guys, do you want to talk about a midseason revamp? Because aside from LeBron's 2018 debacle with the Cleveland Cavaliers, I don't think we've seen one at least to this degree in quite some time. And sure, while bringing in these five players and shipping out three in the process, whether you took this massive swap as amazing, barely moving the needle at all, or somewhere in between, there were still a lot of people out there thinking, and rightfully so, that it would take some time before we actually saw this new group of guys gel together out there on the court on a night in and night out basis and uh well with all due respect to the lakers they don't have that time to wait but i will say on the other hand that in just the small sample size of play we've seen so far from the new guys in the purple and gold that at least in terms of the new possibilities people thought this team would one day be capable of i just don't think anyone could have expected some of the surprises that we've already seen in such a short amount of time but before before we go any further, today's video is brought to you by our friends at DraftKings. Now with the season heating up and most teams looking to make a playoff push, we've decided to team up with our partners at DraftKings to give any new customers a chance to win as well. Because all new customers who sign up at DraftKings using the promo code HDigest and bet at least $5 on any basketball pregame money line will receive an additional $150 in bonus bets if your bet wins. And with these bonus bets, you could get even further in on the action with some of DraftKings' same game parlays, where you can combine multiple bets from a single game like who will win, who will score first, and more to get in on even bigger winnings. But if mobile sports betting isn't available in your state yet, you can still get in on the action with the DraftKings Daily Fantasy app. So be sure to download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today. New customers use promo code HDigest and bet at least $5 on any basketball pregame money line to receive $100 fifty dollars in bonus bets if your bet wins that's promo code h digest only at DraftKings sportsbook Okay, so to get back on topic with the Los Angeles Lakers, while yes, I know it's only been a week and we've seen just a handful of games of this new group of guys out on the court together, it still isn't even a stretch in the slightest to say this team has taken a complete 180 turn since the 2023 deadline. And while if you watch this team in any capacity prior to the deadline, you definitely know there was some massive room for improvement both on the offensive and defensive sides of the ball, and while we have seen pre pretty substantial improvement on both ends within this new rotation already. Let's just pause for a second and focus on the complete revival that we've seen on the offensive side of the ball. Now, out of everyone that was acquired in the Hall of Trades dealt out by the Los Angeles Lakers front office prior to this deadline, it feels pretty safe to say that it was common knowledge initially, and if it wasn't, it's sure as hell common knowledge now just a week into the experiment that D'Angelo Russell was and is the focal point of change this team desperately needed to occur. And while I'm actually recording this, we did unfortunately see an ankle injury involving D'Angelo Russell. However, it seems as if it was nothing and he'll be back in no time. But the injury and how much time he'll miss, if any for that matter, doesn't take away from the monumental impact this man has made already, both when on and even off the court in so many different aspects. Now, I will say, no matter what you think of D'Angelo Russell as a player in the NBA today, I don't think that there's any ability for you to deny that he is nothing short of the ultimate combo guard for this Lakers team. I mean, even when you're just discussing his scoring ability, it already seems next level compared to anything this team has had over the last two years. Because in off-ball scenarios where he's heavily increased his time so far this year, and he will continue to do so playing alongside LeBron, he is quite literally putting up the best splits that we have ever seen from him, both from the field overall and even from behind the three-point line. And then, even when the ball is in his hands, which it's pretty clear that he will be facilitating the offense in most situations when LeBron is not on the court and even at times when he is on the court, his ability to create his own offense at all three levels, I can confidently say, was definitely something that was lacking in the backcourt department. And then, even while working to create this offense, he's also inadvertently providing desperately needed floor 
spacing that seemed almost inexistent to this team for most of this season. But the funny thing about that is, is that this might not even be D'Lo's most crucial asset to this team's actual success. Because that, my friends, might just be his playmaking abilities as a distributor. Where at least so far this season, despite posting the lowest usage rate we've ever seen from him in a single season, he's still top 20 in the league in assists per game. And well, if you've watched literally any of his games so far in his short stint back with the purple and gold, I think he's made it pretty clear how he's been able to consistently do this. But the thing about this acquisition, along with obviously all of the other guys in new pieces like Malik Beasley, Jared Vanderbilt, and even Mo Bamba, is that it's not just all about what these guys can individually do, but instead it's more so how different of a manner this team has actually been able to operate. And what exactly do I mean by this? Well, to answer that question, let's just take a quick look at the Lakers' shooting ability and tendencies so far this season. Because before the deadline being arguably one of the worst perimeter shooters shooting teams in all of basketball, with guys like Austin Reeves, Lonnie Walker, and Troy Brown leading the way in efficiency. While there's absolutely no disrespect intended to any of these guys, you and I can probably both agree that that just isn't going to cut it. But now, with adding the perimeter volume that they did, while I know at first glance at their individual numbers, the efficiency might not look drastically improved, but it's more about the amount of threats and floor spacing as opposed to actual efficiency. I mean, literally all you need to do is just take Malik Beasley as an example in itself. Because being a guy who, yes, is shooting 36% from behind the arc this season, he's also putting up the second most three-point attempts per 36 minutes out of anybody in the NBA, only behind Stephen Curry. Because whenever he's in the game, whether he's staggering off of high screens, spotting up on the wings, or even pulling up in transition, his true impact, aside from the numbers, is ridiculous. But then, even from a pace of play perspective, I'm not sure if many people realize that this Lakers team has the ability to adapt a completely new identity. Because for anyone that maybe didn't know this so far this season, the Lakers actually had the third highest pace of play out of all teams across the entire NBA. And again, the biggest reason it was this high was due to their inadequate shooting. But now, instead of always needing to rely on this in the past, I feel like this team is going to transition into a best of both worlds scenario. Because while they obviously still have the personnel to play through a run-and-gun mentality, especially with the retooling of versatile young guys like Rui Hachimura, Malik Beasley, and of course the Swiss Army Knife in Jared Vanderbilt, but now there's definitely a more constant ability with D'Angelo Russell to slow it down and play through their floor general. And we've really seen a big mix of both of these play styles over the first week of these guys together. But also, there's definitely the perspective of intangibles that I really don't think gets Gets discussed enough with these roster improvements, especially on the defensive end. And honestly, guys like Jared Vanderbilt and Mo Bamba are crystal clear examples of what I'm trying to get at. Because, well, for anyone that really only looks at box score statistics, you probably don't think these guys make much of an impact. But with Jared Vanderbilt really being one of the most versatile players and defenders in the entire league right now, being able to both guard and play the one through five positions, and also with Mo Bamba's ability ability to space the floor for his size, while also being one of the top rim protectors in the entire league, it's pretty ridiculous to think that just over the short amount of time these guys have played together, that they've already transitioned into a top 5 defensive unit. But the real question is, will these new look Lakers end up being enough to push this team to what was once a unprecedented 2023 NBA Finals appearance? Well, as always, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Nonetheless though, you guys, with everything we've mentioned so far regarding the LA Lakers, I am also of course extremely curious to hear what you have to think about their situation. So please be sure to let me know in the comments what has been the most surprising part to you out of everything we've seen from the new look LA Lakers so far. And if you had to, give me a prediction of where you think the Lakers will end up in the 2023 playoff picture. But also, I just wanted to say thank you so much to each and every one of you out there for watching. I appreciate you all more than anything, you all know this, and I will see you guys in the next video.